Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's RTDS Technologies webinar and demo, real-time simulation of aircraft electrical systems with the RTDS simulator. My name is Katie Sidwall. I'm the technical marketing lead at RTDS, and I'm joined by my colleague, simulation specialist in power electronics, Sherry Shi. Today, I'll give a little bit of background on real-time simulation in the context of aircraft electrical systems, and then I'll pass it off to Sherry. She will take a deeper dive on modeling considerations, and she will do an RSCAD screen share demo showing a sample case we've built up for an aircraft electrical system. Just before we get to that content, I have a couple of announcements and housekeeping notes. Firstly, we would love to receive your questions all throughout the webinar presentation today. Please go ahead and submit those in the Q&A widget. That should be close to the top left corner of your webinar platform. So the chat can be reserved for introducing yourself, letting us know where you're joining us from, uh, maybe letting us know if you have any audio or technical issues, but please use the Q&A widget for all your questions. And we'll choose a couple of those to go into a little more detail about and discuss in the live Q&A after the demonstration. The slides from today's webinar are already available for download. You can access them right now. They should be in the additional materials section close to the bottom left of the webinar platform. And this whole recording will also be available. So you can send this webinar link to colleagues who may not have been able to attend today, and they'll be able to register um, to view the webinar on demand. And on demand, you can also ask questions. So if you're joining us on demand today, hello, and I look forward to receiving your questions, which we will respond to by email. Finally, if you are attending the IEEE T&D conference next week in New Orleans, so are we, um, please come visit the RTDS booth. We'll be at booth 5928 in the exposition, and we'll also have a presentation on the innovation stages. So on Tuesday at 11.15 a.m. at Innovation Stage 2, you can check out a general presentation on real-time simulation and hardware in the loop testing, and it will include a lot of real-world examples of utility projects that use this technology. So I look forward to seeing you at that in-person conference. Very exciting. More electric aircraft, or MEA, are one of the big motivators for real-time simulation and hardware in the loop testing in the context of aircraft electrical systems. In MEAs, electrical systems are increasingly used in onboard applications, which in the past have been powered by pneumatic, hydraulic, and mechanical sources. So typically, the electrical system is limited to functions like avionics, lighting, and in-flight entertainment. The pneumatic system provides cabin pressurization, air conditioning, anti-ice protection. The mechanical system is used for fuel and oil pumping, local to the engine. And the hydraulics are typically used for actuation. Transitioning some or all of these functionalities to electrical power has significant benefits to the efficiency and the weight of the aircraft. And that has implications in operating cost and the environmental impact of flight. So in MEAs, of course, the electrical system must have a much higher capacity than conventional aircraft. The Boeing 787, the Dreamliner, for example, that's a commercial example of an MEA, has a total system capacity on the order of one megawatt, so much higher than aircrafts have had in the past. Of course, the electrical system itself can vary in terms of specification and architecture, but typically it'll feature a bleedless engine and a combination of AC and DC supplies. From the generation standpoint, the high maintenance gearbox that is typically used to create a constant speed shaft can be replaced by a variable speed generator coupled with a converter. And this is one of the many places where power electronics come into play for MEAs. Electronics are a critical technology here. Power conversion and control is a major aspect of design and performance of these systems. And the state of power electronics is a big determiner of how far we can go in electric aircraft development. These onboard electronics can also be affected by and contribute to the various challenges of MEA design in operation, such as power quality issues caused by harmonics and switching transients. It's so important for these critical applications to de-risk and validate the technology before it's deployed and to produce challenging conditions in the lab in order to anticipate failures before they happen. So that's where real-time simulation and HIL testing comes in for aircraft. 
So in the demo today, you'll see an EMT, electromagnetic transient simulation, of the aircraft electrical system. As you might know, the output of an EMT simulation is a time-varying instantaneous value. So as you can see on the bottom left, the simulation output resembles the voltage or current waveform from the system as if it were measured from the system with a scope. The frequency bandwidth that can be accurately represented is determined by the simulation time step, or delta t. Typically, that's between 25 and 50 microseconds, but it can be as small as 1 to 3 microseconds when it comes to power electronic circuits, and that will definitely come into play today. So this type of simulation allows for the representation of phenomena over a wide frequency range, and it can capture fast transients in the power system. This makes it a much deeper dive than traditional models for power systems planning, i.e. Uh, phasor domain or RMS representations, positive sequence only analysis. This additional detail and insight is so important for power electronics dominated aircraft electrical systems. It allows for analysis of harmonics and switching transients at frequencies of tens or even more than 100 kilohertz. And it allows for representation of the low level converter controls. We get insight into the system's behavior through a huge variety of failure modes and capture behavior that could be invisible in a phasor domain approach. So this is the main motivation for using EMT simulation in the context of aircrafts. With the RTDS simulator, we're taking that EMT simulation and running it in real time. So dedicated real-time simulation hardware is used to achieve real-time operation at the time steps that I mentioned earlier. The principal advantage of real-time operation is that it allows for power system, protection, and control equipment to be connected to the simulated environment in a closed loop for testing. We can send values from the simulated aircraft electrical system to an external auxiliary power unit controller or engine control system and receive feedback from those devices in real time in order to have an accurate picture of how the equipment and the system respond dynamically to various modes of operation, including failure and contingency scenarios. This systems level approach to testing is quite valuable in the aircraft space. It presents the opportunity to test multiple devices or entire system control simultaneously and without the need for a high power test rig. And those external devices can be connected via analog and digital signals uh, or communication protocols such as Modbus can also be used for interfacing devices to the simulation. Our software RSCAD FX is what our presenter Sherry will be demonstrating in later today. And it's important to know that the architecture she demos is just one example of an AES model. The software is very flexible. The whole goal is to allow the engineer to build up their custom model, whatever the specifications of the aircraft generation and distribution systems and the loads are, they can be reflected in the model. In terms of the power system models that are used, there are a wealth of different models typically involved in these simulations. Our library has several options for transformer models, for example, for representing the TRUs, where we can represent saturation and internal faults, models for batteries, for dynamic loads, many different machine models, synchronous uh, induction, DC machines, models that include transformers and options for internal faults. So Sherry will go into more detail on the modeling aspect uh, in her presentation and demo. Before I pass it off to her though, I do wanna take a minute to talk a little more about power electronics modeling and the converter models you'll see in today's demo. There are many challenges and considerations when it comes to real-time power electronics modeling due to the strict restraints of the real-time environment and the available processing power, especially considering that often these converters are simulated alongside a larger, meaningful power system circuit. I wanted to raise some of those considerations to you here so you have a bit of background when you see the models that Sherry uses in her demonstration. If you're already familiar with our Universal Converter Model, or UCM, this will be a bit of review for you. So the main takeaway from this slide is that in general, converters can be simulated either as uh, fully switched models, which can represent switching transients and harmonics, or as average value models, which use the same controls as the detailed models, but they produce an averaged version of the switching, basically an accurate operational profile for the converter without the low level details. There are a couple of other factors that determine the performance uh, and the accuracy of an EMT power electronics model. 
One is whether the change in switching state is modeled with switched resistances or via discrete inductor and capacitor circuits, or LC switching. And the other is whether the model is decoupled at the DC bus. The UCM, or Universal Converter Model, which we released last year, is the model you'll see in today's demonstration. It was motivated by not only a demand for modeling converters with a higher switching frequency, often greater than 30 kHz or sometimes even in excess of 100 kHz, but also by a general desire to reduce the trade-offs and issues that I mentioned on the previous slide. So this model was enabled by a finding that an approach to average modeling can be used to achieve high resolution firing. The UCM is available for several fixed topology converters, two level, uh, NPC and T-type three level, boost and buck, flying capacitor. And it has multiple input types, which makes it very flexible in terms of the level of detail or granularity that it provides. And it can be used in both the main step and the sub-step environments, so running at time steps in the range of 30 microseconds or 3 microseconds, for example. And it's important to note that these models are not decoupled from the surrounding circuit. So there's no interface, and this improves the numerical stability of the model considerably, uh, among other advantages that the UCM brings. And these are resistively switched models. So they are more accurate and produce waveforms with less noise than their LC switched counterparts. Input types and performance. Basically, the UCM has three different possible input types. We call them full firing pulse input, modulation wave input, and improved firing input. It can be used in a similar way as the average model, where you're feeding it a sine wave for modulation, and you get the converter performance without the full switching detail. That's what we call modulation wave input. It also has regular firing pulse input, reading in one firing pulse per time step, uh, and those firing pulses can come from uh, an external controller connected via the uh, digital input card, or from a component in the simulation. And the performance of that uh, input of the UCM is similar to our existing resistively switched models in the sub-step environment. Thirdly, and most uniquely, it has this new type of input which we're calling improved firing. And here we're capturing all of the firing pulses um, within a time step at a high resolution, and then calculating how much of that time step the switch should be on for. So it's essentially producing a duty cycle that allows for multiple on-off transitions per time step. Improved firing has a substantial effect on this model's performance, which we can see here. In the sub-step environment, we can model very high switching frequencies, over 150 kilohertz, without needing to drive the time step way down into the nanoseconds range. Basically, it means we're getting accurate representation of a great frequency range while still being conscious of the computational burden and the quantity of simulation hardware that's required. This is perhaps even more impressive because of its implication in the main time step environment. Improved firing means that for the first time ever, we can run converters in the main time step, say 30 microseconds, while still achieving full switching detail in the 2 to 3 kilohertz range. This implies huge savings in simulation hardware requirements for the user. So depending on the required switching frequency, that means that an aircraft simulation, including detailed converters with harmonics and switching transients, could all be represented in the main time step environment. Today we're using the sub-step to show you what that looks like, uh, and so that we can get a frequency of 15 kilohertz. Finally, here's what the UCM performance looks like. It's hard to see much detail here, but you can get an idea of what the different inputs look like in different time step environments. The third graph shows the output of a two-level converter running in the main time step environment at 50 microseconds using the new improved firing algorithm. So you can see it produces detailed switching, just as the sub-step models do, simply with a more restricted frequency range. The fourth graph shows the modulation waveform input, basically the average value model version of the UCM, running at 50 microseconds, which was previously the only way to simulate converters in the main time step. So there's quite a big difference there. Uh, so when Sherry goes into the dual active bridge and other converter models in her demo, keep in mind that the UCM is being used to realize those resistively switched converter models uh, with no decoupling. 
With that, I'll pass it off to Sherry to show you our aircraft electrical system model. Thank you, Katie. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well and stay safe. Today, I'm going to present an example of the aircraft electrical system modeling in RTDS. There are four parts in this presentation. Firstly, I will give a brief introduction. Then I will present the aircraft electrical system modeling in RTDS. Followed by that, I will conduct a simulation demonstration. And last, I will conclude the presentation and give an overview of our future development in the aircraft area. Okay, let me introduce a little bit of our simulator and the background of the aircraft electrical systems. Our latest simulator is called Novaco. It has achieved a comprehensive improvements compared to PB5 version. Katie has introduced some important features for Novaco in her presentation just now, so I only summarize it briefly here. Our Novaco employs the IBM's state-of-the-art Power 8 processor. Each chassis contains 10 powerful cores running at 3.5 GHz. Novaco also provides a higher precision simulation with the time steps reduced by up to 50%. Each chassis is scalable from 1 to 10 cores. Overall system expansion and full connectivity is up to 144 chassis. Our Novaco provides three simulation modes to set different simulation time steps, which are the super step, main step, and the sub step. Our simulator have developed various models for converters, transformers, machines, cables, and so on to meet different application needs. Today, we focus on the modeling of the aircraft electrical system based on the RTDS. Firstly, we need to be clear what kind of components are required in the aircraft electrical systems. There has been several popular electrical system architectures over decades. The right top graph shows the conventional architecture with the 115 volt main AC bus. They are nonlinear loads connected to the AC bus, such as the hydraulic pumps. There's a 28 volt DC bus converted from the main AC bus. It is used to support avionics can be electronics and batteries. The left side graph is for the more open electrical technologies architecture. It has a 230 watt AC bus and a 540 watt DC bus. The auto transformer tra rectify unit, that is ATRU, is used to convert the 230 watt AC bus to a 540 volt DC bus. There are several permanent magnetic synchronous machines connected to both the DC and the AC buses. The right bottom graph is for the more electronic aircraft architecture. This system contains a 270 volt DC bus. Using DC to DC converters, the 270 volt DC bus can be converted to other DC buses to power avionics and batteries. Using DC to AC converters, an AC bus can be obtained to power the AC loads. For example, the EMS, ECS, and the inverter driving loads. In summary, the key components for the aircraft electrical systems include TRU, DC-DC converters, DC-AC converters, and AC-DC converters transformers, machines, batteries, and so on. In our simulator, there are various converter types to support power electronics simulations. The universal converter models have benefits on high-frequency converters, as Katie introduced in her presentation. Here, I list the converter types using UCM technology. We have a bulk converter, booster converter, two-level voltage source converter, three-level MPC, three-level flying capacitor, three-level T-type converters. We also developed a dual-active bridge model 
which has been fully tested and will be released soon. All these UCMs support modulation waveform or duty cycle input as an average modeling, improved firing pulse for relatively large time step, and regular firing pulse. All these topologies are resistive switching models. For a time step of 2 microseconds, the switching frequency can be up to 221.5 kHz. We also provide various machine models, including DC machine, induction machine, synchronous machine, PMSM, and so on. These machines can be used to emulate different loads in the aircraft electrical systems. For some special applications and tests, some synchronous machines are modeled including transformer or internal faults. Most of the machines can be configured to be single phase or multiple phase. There are many transformer models in our ASCAD, including single phase, three phase, and multi phase transformers. The winding connection type includes a Y Y connection and a Y delta connection. Also, some models consider internal faults for some special tests. We also have cable models, including pi section and T line. For example, there are regular pi section, double pi section, and frequency dependent pi section. For T line, we have a Bergeron T line and frequency dependent T line models. The battery model in RTDS is shown here. It is modeled for Leon battery. There are two types of batteries depending on the modeling method. One considers the state of charge, SOC, influence on the parameters in the equivalent circuit, and the other takes account of the temperature effect on the model dynamics. So with all the various models in RTDS, we are able to develop a detailed simulation for the aircraft electrical systems. The aircraft electric system sample case is shown on this page. It contains three main buses, that is 115-volt AC bus with 400 Hz frequency, 270-volt DC bus, and 28-volt DC bus. In order to form the 115-volt AC bus, a synchronous generator operating at variable speed constant frequency mode is adopted using a diode rectifier and a three-level voltage source converter. The conversion between the 150 watt AC bus and the 270 watt DC bus is a transformer rectifier unit, that is TRU. In this simulation example, we utilize a 12 pulse TRU. The dual active bridge converter is used to convert 270 watt DC bus to the 28 watt DC bus. Both these two DC buses have a battery support. All these three buses have a linear and nonlinear loads from this graph. For example, the 115 watt AC bus has a linear resistive load, induction machine, and a PMSM load. The 28 volt DC bus has a linear resistive load and a nonlinear DC machine load. Firstly, we split the large system to several parts and develop each part of circuit step by step. Then we combine all the parts together to build this large case. Firstly, I will start the example with the synchronous generator operating with the variable speed constant frequency mode. The synchronous generator is rated at 200 volt line to line voltage, 400 hertz frequency, and 70 kVA capacity. This topology includes a synchronous generator, a three-phase diode rectifier, and a two-level voltage source inverter. The diode rectifier DC voltage is controlled by the state voltages, whereas the state voltage are adjusted by the field windings voltage. The simulation results of the synchronous generator circuit are shown here. The generator speed is set at rated speed. The main AC bus is controlled to be 
150 watt and 400 hertz. From the steady state waveforms, we can see that the main AC bus voltage are sinusoidal with very good quality. OK, let's move on to the implementation of a 12 pulse TRU. The transformers are in YY delta connection. It is seen that there are two rectifiers connected to the Y connection and the delta connection windings. The rectified voltage has 12 pulses within one fundamental period. We use the UCM converters with all firing pulses set to zero as diode rectifiers. Know that the leakage of the transformer should be properly designed since the output DC voltage is tightly related to this leakage inductance. The simulation results of the travel pulse TRU are shown here. The TRU is uh, operated with a resistive load for 50 kilowatts power. From the simulation results, we can see that the output DC voltage is uh, around 270 volts. For the conversion between the 270 volt and 28 volt DC buses, we use a DAB converter. This converter provides isolation, high power density, fast power reversal and bulk boost operation with possibility of a high step ratio. It's commonly used in aircraft electrical system for DC-DC conversion. This converter is designed with a 10 kHz switching frequency with a proper transform leakage. And to the full power, the phase shift angle is around 40 degrees. Note that we recently developed an integrated DAB model, which can save four nodes in, in one DAB. It has been fully tested and will be released soon. The simulation results of the DAB converter are showing on this page. The output DC voltage is established with a ramping up rate. With the improved firing pulse, the DAB operation can be precisely controlled by the phase shift between the left and the right side converters firing pulses. There's a PMSM load connected to the main AC bus. The PMSM is rated at 60 Hz. So a diode rectifier and a two-level voltage source inverter are used to convert the 115W 400Hz AC bus to 150W at 60Hz bus. The PMSM is controlled in speed mode. The simulation results are showing on this page. We can see that the PMSM operates steadily and the speed control is effective. As seen from the last graph, the speed is changed from 1 per unit to 0 0.9 per unit. We can see that the speed can tra track the reference very well. There's also a induction machine load directly connected to the main AC bus. Its rated capacity is at 12 kVA. The simulation results are showing here. We can see that the induction machine can operate successfully and around the one point speed in the steady state. For the 270 watt DC bus, a resistive load is considered for onboard lamp. There's also battery support. The initial SOC of the battery is set to 100%. For the 28 watt DC bus, a resistive load and battery support are considered. Also, a DC motor is considered, which is generally used to drive a fuel pump and so on. Okay, till now, each small part of the circuit has been developed and validated. Now, I will give you a simulation demonstration on the whole system in ASCAD. The simulated large system is shown here. The same corners generator is online when its speed is in the range of 10k to 20k RPM. If the same corners generator is offline, battery will be connected to power the load with the initial SOC at 100%. When the battery's SOC decreases to 60%, the same corners generator will be online to charge the battery if its speed is recovered to the normal range. Okay, let's go to ASCAD to see more details of this case. 
Now I have switched over into the ASCAD software. This is the draft page of the sample case. The large time step is set to 50 microseconds. There are several boxes on the home page. This green box is a sub-step box. And it is set to execute six times per large time step. That is, the sub-step box has a 8.33 microsecond time step. Let's double click to open this box and see what is inside. This box includes all the power circuits for the simulated system. Let me zoom in. It includes a thin corners generator connected to a diode rectifier, followed by a two level voltage source inverter to form a 115 volt AC bus. This AC bus connected to four breakers. The first breaker is connected to a TRU converter. The second breaker is connected to a resistive load. The third one connected to a diode rectifier, two level voltage source inverter, and the PMSM load. The fourth one connected to the induction machine directly. The TRU converter's output is the 270 volt DC bus. And this bus, there's a resistive load and the battery support. Also, the DIB converter is connected to the 270 volt DC bus. And the output of the DIB is 28 volt DC bus. And this bus, there's a resistive load, DC machine, and battery support. Let's go back to the home page. This pink box is for the startup timing for the whole system. It includes the deblocking and the blocking signals for all the controlled converters. There are also manual switches for the load breaker control. It also detects the SOC of the two batteries to enable the breaker disconnect or connect to charge or discharge the batteries. This box is the controls for the same corners generator side converters. It controls the DC link voltage for the diode rectifier and the AC bus voltage. If we open this box, we can see the sampling signals for the DC, uh, DC buses and, and uh, for the AC bus voltages. There's a PR controller to control the DC link voltage and uh, provide the reference for the field winding voltages. The AC bus voltage control provides the modulation waveforms to the two-level voltage source inverter. This box is the DC chopper logic for the 270 volt DC bus. This is the DIB control. It controls the output DIB voltages using the phase shift angle between the left and the right converters firing pulses. This one is the PMSM motor load control. It controls the motor speed and the reactive power. Okay, let me compile this case. Let's go to the runtime. Okay, let's see the page of the runtime. This page shows a brief graph for the simulated system. And also there are several meters for convenient observation. Close to each part of the circuit, there might be a group of parameters using draft slides to set the converter parameters. This method is easy for users to change the parameters for their design. 
and this part shows the groups of uh, control configurations. The first part is to start or stop the simulation. This slide is used to set the speed of the synchronous generator. The normal range is from 10k to 20k RPM. The second group is for the load breaker controls. There are manual switches for each bus to disconnect or connect loads. The third group is for the synchronous generator control. It controls the DC bus voltage and the main AC bus voltage. We generally set it as one per unit. This group is for the DIB control. We control the output DC voltage to one per unit. The, here's the open or closed loop for a debug. We can use open loop operation with the, the preset phase shift angle here to operate this system. The last group is for the PMSM control. It controls the speed and the reactive power. And the speed reference is set as one per unit. A reactive power is set to zero. Okay, let me run this simulation. Now, I press the start button to start the system operation. Let's, let us have a look at the waveforms. This is the waveforms for the synchronous generator. These are for the TRU side. The, these waveforms are for the DAB side. And the following are for the machine waveforms including induction machine, PMSM, and the DC motor. We can see that the system can start up very smoothly to establish a 270 volt DC bus and a 28 volt DC bus. Let me show you the steady state waveforms. Let me zoom in the waveforms for close look. This this is the voltage is for the uh, main AC bus voltage. We can see that uh, they are very sinusoidal and have very good voltage quality. This is the 270 watt DC bus voltage. This is the 28 watt DC bus voltages. And from the meters, we can see that the 28 DC bus voltage has a resistive load at around 14 kilowatts. And for the TRU, the power is around 50 kilowatts. For the synchronous generator, output power is around 67.7 kilowatts. We can also see some waveforms for the machines. You can see that the machine for the PMSM and the induction machine are operates around the one per unit speed. Same from here, this is the speed signal. For the DC motor, the speed is also around the one per unit in steady state. Now let me show you some dynamic performance. Okay, now I change the speed from 15K to 19K. We can see that with the 
same corner the speed changes. The 270 volt DC bus and the 28 DC bus can be under control. Now I change the speed from 19k to 11k. We can also see that both DC bus voltages can be controlled very well and the main AC bus voltage is, is maintained and is the 200 volts line to line voltage is seen from this graph. Now I would like to change the same corner's speed out of the normal range. Let's say change it to 9K. We can see that uh, the same corners generator will be offline. There's no operating waveforms for the same corners generator side. And the batteries under the 270 watt DC bus and the 28 DC bus will be in use. We can see from the SOC waveforms for these two batteries. We can see that uh, the SOC waveforms are decreasing from 100%. Let's wait a fifth time to the SOC reduces to 60%. From our principle, when the SOC decreases to 60%, the, the battery will be offline. We can see that the SOC here stays at 60%. If the same corner's generator speed is recovered to the normal range, let's say 15K. We can see that the same corner's generator will be online to establish this main AC bus. And also the 270 volt DC bus and 28 DC bus will be generated very well. And if we see from the SOC waveforms, you can see that the batteries, the two batteries will be charged. The SOC are increasing. You can see from the waveforms here. Okay, now I would like to show you some disturbances in this system with a manual switch on and off for different loads. For example, I just disconnect the resistive load for the 270 watt bus. Just switch off. We can see that the DC, the main AC bus voltage here, the root mean squared value is showing here. We can see that it is still maintained, regulated at the 200 volts for line to line voltage. For the 270 DC bus voltage, it is increased to 281 volts. This is the diode rectifier. The DC voltage is not accurately regulated. So when the load is lighter, the DC link voltage will be increased. But the 28 volt DC bus is still well controlled. We can also disconnect the PMSM load. We can see that the main AC bus voltage is still regulated very well and the DC link voltage for the 28 volt DC link is still controlled very well. Let's disconnect all the loads. 
This is for the resistive load. And uh, I also want to disconnect this induction machine load. So right now, there's only the main DC AC bus is established. We can see that in the light no load condition, the, the AC bus voltage is still maintained around 200 volts for the line to line voltage. Let's reconnect all the loads step by step. We can see the dynamic performance of the system performance for the sudden load change. This still operates very well for the system. Okay, the demonstration is over here. Now I have switched over to the slides for the remaining part of the presentation. Well, in some applications, the aircraft electrical system may require hardware in loop test for further investigation. Here, I will briefly introduce our hardware interface to peripherals. Our RTDS simulator provides the gigabit transceiver, digital input and output cards, including GTAI, GTIO, GTDI, and GTDO cards. The GTAI version 2 card includes 12 analog input channels, with each channel configured as a differential input with an input range of negative 10 watts to positive 10 watts. The GTIO card includes 16 16-bit analog output channels with an output range from negative 10 volts to positive 10 volts. The GTDO card includes 16 digital output channels, which are arranged into eight banks. Each block of eight channels may be operated at a different voltage level in the range of positive 5 volts to positive 30 volts DC voltage. The external power supplies are required to provide the output voltage source. The GTDI card includes 16 digital input channels. Each bank of 8 input channels is isolated from the other banks and the RTDS system. The GTDI can be used to read time-critical firing pulses from an external controller into an RTDS simulation model running in main time step, sub step, or small time step. We also have Aurora protocol, which is developed by Silynx. It is suitable for high speed point to point communication links. Here shows an example how a control hardware in loop might look like. From this graph, all the power circuits are modeled inside the RTDS simulator, as an example. And then the sampling signals, for example, the voltages and the currents from the power circuit are sent to the GTIO card, then goes to the external controller. Also, the external controller might require some contact the status signal. These signals will read in via the GTDO card to the external controller. After the control schemes executed in the external controller, 
the firing pulses and other control signals for con contactors or other, other devices are sent to the RTDS via the GTDI card. Okay, now I would like to conclude my presentation and give the future development. In this presentation, an example of aircraft electrical system was simulated with very good performance. Thanks to the development of UCM, the simulation with high switching frequency can be done on the relatively large time step. For example, in this simulation example, the 15 kHz switching frequency with 8.33 microseconds in this example, only 8 calculations for one switching period. And RTDS also provides various machine models to emulate the nonlinear motor load in aircraft electrical system. And in the future, we plan to provide more aircraft electrical systems modeled as the sample cases. Thank you for your attention. I will pass it to Katie.